In my last video, I talked about the 31 mm luminous eyepiece from Celestron and concluded that whilst the build quality is definitely on a premium level, the viewing experience is a bit of a letdown. I also argued that there are other eyepieces out there that can offer a similar performance for less money. Well, in today's video, I'm going to test that theory and compare the 31 mm Luminos to the 32 mm Swan from Omegon. So hit that like button and subscribe and let's get this video on the road. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to Video Observatory. When I decided to try out a Luminos, I was looking for a good eyepiece that would allow me to observe deep sky objects without breaking my bank account. And even though the Celestron costs 400 euros here in Germany, I was willing to accept its price tag if that meant that it would significantly improve my deep sky observations. However, after testing and reviewing it two weeks ago, it left me kind of disappointed. I mean, sure, the build quality is top notch, but the viewing experience, not so much. By the way, if you haven't watched that video, I encourage you to do so. I leave a link in the description below. Anyway, this led me to the idea to pit the Luminos against one of my favorite budget eyepieces for deep sky observations, the 32 mm Swan from Omegon, and see how it would compare. So let's check out the two eyepiece lineups. Celestron's premium eyepiece lineup is called Luminos and consists of six eyepieces and a 2 inch 2.5x bellow lens. The eyepieces have focal length starting from 7 mm and going all the way up to 31 mm for the biggest one. The apparent field of view is not only identical for all eyepieces, but with its 82 degrees also very wide. All six Luminos eyepieces are pair focal, which means that you can switch out eyepieces during observing sessions with little or no additional focusing required. They also feature a design with six lenses that are fully multi-coated and have blackened edges to minimize internal reflections. Just like Luminos is the premium eyepiece series for Celestron, the super wide angle eyepiece series from Omegon represents their version of premium eyepieces. There are six eyepieces in the Swan lineup as well, with focal length starting from 10 to 38 mm and a decent 70 degree of apparent field of view. All eyepieces come with five lenses with blackened edges housed in an all aluminum body. All right, before we move on and compare specifications, I want to quickly mention the testing conditions. I've tested both eyepieces side by side in combination with my 12 inch F5 Dobsonian telescope and the observing was done on multiple nights from a bottle four location. Okay. Now let's focus on the comparison between the 31 mm Luminos and the 32 mm Swan and start with optical specifications. The Luminos comes with a focal length of 31 mm, an 82 degree apparent field of view and 27 mm of eye relief. The Swan has a focal length of 32 mm, a narrower 70 degree apparent field of view and a slightly shorter eye relief of 25 mm. So when comparing these two, the only major difference so far is the apparent field of view. And here the 82 degrees of the Luminos promises to offer a much more immersive viewing experience than the Swan. But unfortunately, this promise is only partially fulfilled. You see, even though the Luminos allows you to see a bigger area of the night sky, the view itself suffers from three major issues. First, there is the flatness of the field of view, or better said, the lack of it. Moving the telescope while looking through this eyepiece reveals a noticeable spherical aberration. It's not a deal breaker, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. It's also something that the Swan doesn't suffer from at all. 
Its field of view is flatter by comparison, thus offering a much more pleasant viewing experience. But in all fairness, it's important to note that because of the smaller apparent field of view of the swan, it's much easier for it to deliver a flatter field of view. The second issue I had with the Luminos is that its field of view is susceptible to blackouts if you position your eye too close to the lens. This effect is also known as kidney beaning. It manifests itself when you move in too close to the lens, closer than 15 millimeters. Then black spots start to appear covering large areas of the field of view. And the thing is that given the wide apparent field of view, you always have the tendency to move in as close as possible to the lens to be able to see as much as possible of the field of view, making the matter worse in the process. The swan is much more forgiving in this regard. No matter how and where you position your eye, it's only rarely that black spots can be seen. And the third aspect that put me off was a moderate to severe edge of field brightening that looks like some kind of odd refraction due to a curved glass. I also noticed that the brighter the sky is, either due to poor seeing conditions or due to light pollution, the more visible this effect becomes. I also suspect that this effect is more present in faster telescopes. schmidt cassegrain telescopes, or SETs, with their long focal length might work better together with this eyepiece. Nevertheless, this is something that the SWAN doesn't struggle with, at least not in combination with my F5 Dobsonian telescope. Its field of view maintains a constant brightness and contrast right up to the field stop with no noticeable aberrations visible. At this point, it might look like I'm bashing on the Luminos, but I'm only harsh because it commands a price tag that's more than double that of the Swan. If it were much more affordable, somewhere in the range of two to 300 US dollars, then we would have a different kind of conversation. However, the Luminos does have its strengths. The views are bright and with good contrast levels. They are also sharp. However, if you plan on using it in combination with a fast reflector telescope, let's say faster than F6, then I recommend getting a comma corrector as well. The very wide field of view combined with a curved primary mirror of the telescope will display some chromatic aberrations because the apparent field of view of the SWAN is significantly narrower, this effect is not as pronounced there. But both eyepieces will heavily benefit from a comma corrector, so keep this in mind as well. Build quality-wise, both eyepieces offer comparable levels of build quality. The lenses are in both cases fully multi-coated and come with blackened edges to avoid unwanted internal reflections. The housings are made out of precise milled aluminum and both feel premium when holding them in hand. The Luminos is a big eyepiece and it's heavy too, weighing in a hefty 1.1 kilograms or 2.5 pounds. This might pose some problems for smaller telescopes. By comparison, the Swan with its 420 grams seems like a lightweight eyepiece. Both eyepieces offer an adjustable eye guard with a twist in and out system. Here I prefer the eye guard of the Luminos because it's more flexible, thus allowing for a better fit when you press your face against it. The eye guard is able to shield your eye almost perfectly from unwanted light sources like street lamps nearby, for example. Furthermore, the large diameter of the top lens for both eyepieces ensures a very comfortable viewing experience. So, to sum up, both are good eyepieces, no question about that. And both come with their different strengths and weaknesses. Whilst the build quality is excellent on both, 
the viewing experience paints a different picture with the Luminos suffering from a few optical aberrations. Aberrations much less present in the case of the Swan. To make up for this, the Luminos offers a very generous apparent field of view of 82 degrees. This is something where the Swan with the 70 degrees can't keep up. In terms of brightness, contrast and sharpness, both eyepieces offer similar performance. So which one is the best? Well, not taking the price into consideration. This would be a much harder choice. But seeing that the Luminos costs 400 euros here in Germany, whereas the Swan only costs 140 euros, the situation changes quite a bit. Even though the apparent field of view of the Swan is narrower than the one of the Luminos, it manages to best the Luminos in terms of viewing experience, whilst offering comparable levels of build quality, thus making it the better choice in my opinion. Furthermore, for the price difference between the two eyepieces, you could also get a good comma corrector, which combined with the Swan, for example, would result in a very capable setup for observing deep sky objects. That's why I'm going to stick to the Swan for now and send the Luminos back. All right, so these were my thoughts about these two eyepieces, and now I'm curious to see what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have questions or feedback, then please leave a comment below and I will get back to you. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next video.